Welcome to opening day 2024 for the Minnesota Twins. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Rich, and we are honored to be joined by the man who put this team that's going to hop on the field here in a little bit, Derek Falvey. And Derek, thank you very much for stopping by. Happy opening day. Happy opening day to you. This is, uh, it's like I say happy new year to everyone this morning because that's what it feels like. It's just a great day, beautiful weather here, so we're excited. Well, you talked earlier today with us on the Fox 9 Morning News about your feelings, and I asked you if you felt like a, a dad or, or uh, somebody that had built something and finally gets to see it come to fruition. How do you feel right now? Uh, we're 69 minutes away from first pitch. It feels great. You Yesterday when the workout ends, we have a workout here the day before, you, you feel this change in the guys. They're just ready to go. And so walking in the clubhouse this morning, everyone's getting ready, pumped. Opening day is special for anyone who's been around baseball, loves baseball the way we all do. It's just, it's really a special feeling. This is the 64th opener for the Minnesota Twins franchise. Uh, it's pretty amazing how many Twins fans we see here already in Kauffman Stadium that have made the six-hour drive to be a part of this. That's pretty neat. Every time we come here, certainly for opening day, but other times, we see Twins fans here all the time. You know, as you said, it's a short enough drive, you know, and, and the ability to get down here for a game, day like opening day is special, but they're out here. Our, our players love it. They feel it, and we're really excited to get back to Target Field and have that feeling next Thursday, too. Yeah, the home opener is a week from tonight or for you guys against Cleveland. Let's talk a little bit about how you put this team together this year. Before we get into the lineup of today's game, just the overall thought process going into winter and what were you were thinking about adding, what you saw in the playoffs that you felt you had to address. Well, I think when we look back to the end of last year, a lot to be proud of. We learned a lot. Young players stepped up. Veteran players found big moments, right? The key for us was getting healthy with some players. And while we had that one Byron Buxton at bat in the postseason, we we're hopeful for more. And the chance for him to lead off today, come back and be healthy, he's such a dynamic, game-changing player that we couldn't have done anything to acquire anybody as impactful as what Byron can be for us. So to add to those guys, when you see guys like Royce Lewis and Eddie Julian get the experience they did last year, we wanted to add and round out. A guy like Carlos Santana brings a lot of experience. He's played in World Series games. He fits really well for us. Manny Margot, another guy that could fit in the outfield and complement our group. But it's a really good group to start with, and we're really excited about what it could do this year. And I'm of the theory that a team needs to kind of taste the playoffs to understand what a different animal it is. I mean, Carlos Correa obviously knows what that animal is because he slayed it several times when he was with Houston. But for those young players that stepped up in the moment, how much can that carry them this year through the regular season as they try to repeat as division champs? I think it's critical. When you go back to our postseason last year, two of the biggest plays in the, all of our games was Carlos's pickoff at second base <laughs> yeah. and then ultimately the play he made to back up third base because he could slow the game down, because he'd been there before, because he knew what it felt like to have that kind of energy in the ballpark in the most meaningful games. Well, now you watch Eddie Julian take a big swing in one of our last games to hit that home run. Royce Lewis to hit a few home runs through the course of the postseason that were huge and meaningful for us. Those guys had never had that experience before. So now they, they know what it's like to get there. They know what it's like to win in the postseason. And they know what it's like to lose and to have an end abruptly. Now it's about finding a way to get back there and use that as motivation and fuel to get over that home. All right, let's take a look at today's starting lineup. And you alluded to it already that... Uh, Byron Buxton is at the top, and you know what? I think he would have put himself there had Rocco not put him there because he has been so amped up since the start of spring training for this moment. He really has. I mean, he's come in every day. We just ask him to smile because when <laughs> Byron smiles, it lights up the rest of the room. But the fact that he went through the offseason he did, rehab, worked really hard, and every week we got past in spring training where he was feeling good and the trainers, the docs said he felt good. We couldn't have been happier. So to get to the point yesterday, I pulled him aside, you know, right after the workout. And I said, pretty awesome. You're going to go play center field tomorrow, isn't it? And he smiled again. And, you know, that's just a cool moment for all the Twins fans who've been by his side all of these years trying to navigate through it. Let's hope he leads us today. Yeah, and then you have Ryan Jeffers batting second. That's a unique situation to see the catcher there. But Rocco said beforehand that, you know, 
he's earned that spot with what he did last year and in the postseason and again this spring. Ryan's been a really good hitter now for the last you know year at least, and he's someone who, especially against left-handed pitching, they've got a left-handed starter going on the mound here. You have four guys up top that have really done well against left-handed pitching, so chance to maybe get something going early, and, and I, I totally understand where Rock's head's at. And then you have Kyle Farmer in instead of Julian. Uh, was that a nod to his being in baseball this long or is it the left-handed situation? I think it's a little more related to how we match up, you know, and ultimately how Rocco utilizes the roster because he certainly talked to Eddie about it. We're facing a left-handed starter today. That's what Kyle does well is hit left-handed pitching. There's a chance in this game, I very much bet, that we'll see Eddie Julian taking a bat somewhere along the way, but that's Rocco. He's found a way to utilize the whole bench every game. At the beginning of last season, Willie Castro wasn't playing as much. He was coming in late in the game, trying to find the right spot, and over the course of the season, really grew into one of our most effective players and weapons off the bench. I'm sure we'll have that again today. Now, when you look at that lineup and the power that it possesses, is that what you wanted to build? Because you built several different kind of ball clubs in your tenure here. You had the uh, the home run derby club, and then you went last year with a team that was going to be more aggressive on the base passes and take opportunities and try to put the pressure on opponents. What do you see in this lineup that you trot out today? Well, the one thing we're focused on is how do we score the most runs? However we get them. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me how we get them. We just got to get them. And I think power has certainly become more a part of the game. Obviously, strikeouts have become part of the game in a different way, too. But when we look at this team, I see maybe more balance than even what we had last year. I see guys that can take a walk and get on base, like Carlos Santana or Manny Margot coming in with an advanced approach, uh, guys that can put the ball in play when they need to. But we're also going to have power. You know, when you have guys up top, like we just said, Byron Buxton you know, has power, Ryan Jeffers has power, Royce Lewis. So to win games in the postseason, as we saw last postseason, you're going to need to hit for some power against some of the best pitching in the game. Hopefully we can get off to a good start with that today. All right, Royce Lewis made such a splash for your ball club. How does he not suffer a sophomore slump? I mean, even though he's been around three years, even though this is his first opening day, but... You know, I mean, people are going to expect so much of him. How do you feel he'll handle that? You know, Royce has been through so much already in his career. When you're the first overall pick in the draft, that kind of puts a target on your back. <laughs> when you have two ACL surgeries, people are counting you out and making you think that maybe you're not going to be the guy that ultimately could, could lead a team. He has never once shut it down. He has, ne he has persisted through every challenge. So whatever challenge is facing Royce, I wouldn't bet against the kid, that's for sure. And he's done everything this offseason to put himself in a great place. We're really excited about where he's at now. And Carlos Correa is your oldest player on the roster today. But he was acting like a kid out here. During BP, he was playing air guitar while he was waiting to take his cuts in the cage. Uh, he's out always pepping up his teammates. He's always going and checking the pulse of his teammates. Is that kind of an accurate way that he works? And maybe why he's so successful yeah the things you get to see carlos on the field you certainly see him behind the camera he's so he's so polished he's so talented but the stuff you see in the clubhouse about how he does put his arm around a guy when he needs it or maybe punch him in the ribs when he needs that too he does that better than anybody i've seen it and ultimately that's the kind of leader we know we have he battled through things last year but always kept his mouth shut always showed up and always played great defense now he's feeling healthier, he's in a better place. We're excited about having him as a leader for guys like Royce, like Eddie Julian, like others that are coming up behind him. The guy that will be starting your second straight opener here in Kansas City, Pablo Lopez. Uh, he is a guy, I think in your mind, if I was in your chair, which I don't really want because there's way too many giant decisions you have to make, he would be somebody that I would not ever have a second thought that he will not be ready, he will not prepare himself. He will not give us everything he has. It, it, you're 100% right, Jim. I mean, when we just talked about Carlos, we talked about the preparedness, the way he leads in that clubhouse. I've never been around a pitcher quite like Pablo and the way he prepares. He beats almost everybody to the park every day. He's the hardest worker after the game. He's just so prepared every day. And what we saw last year was true ace mentality, right? And certainly started with opening day here in Kansas City, pitched well. But watching him in those postseason games down in Houston, the one against Toronto, I mean, he had so much uh, so much pressure on him, and he handled it with grace and ease. He, he is the type of player every Twins fan should be proud of. And lastly, the bullpen and your issues there with the injuries. How much of a concern is that for you at this point? Are you starting to say, geez, I got to start 
talking to some other people about seeing what I can do to supplement this while you deal with these injuries. Yeah, no doubt. When you have Joan Duran go down and the impact that he's made, it's it's hard for us. The good news, it's not an arm injury. It's an oblique injury. He's already tracking in a better spot. Or hopefully we get him back soon. Caleb Fieldbar, another guy who we know has been a big part of this bullpen over the years. But when I saw Griffin Jacks this spring can make some adjustments, continue to develop his breaking ball the way he had, I see Brock Stewart ready to step up in those roles. Those guys are going to need to take on a little more load, but so are the younger guys behind him. That's part of a season. How you deal with that adversity, how you deal with those injuries, is going to determine whether or not you have success. And we're going to hopefully put our guys in positions to do so. Well, Derek, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time on opening day there's a lot of requests and things that you have to take care of but we thank you so much for giving us some of your time absolutely well happy to be here it's opening day hopefully all twins fans back home love today and love what's coming all right we'll be back